Now, they say that you should do something that you've never done before every day of your life. I've certainly never been in Garland sober ever. <laughs> uh, this is a first for me, Lee Butler, and it's, I'm here because it's, it's a big night on Saturday for you. It is a very big night indeed. Um, probably, it might be a bit of a bold statement, but probably one of the biggest nights I've ever done. Wow. Um, even after doing, you know, reminisce the state all my early days at the 051, it's a very special night for me. Tell me why. Tell me why it's so important. Um, it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, and, you know, when you, you're doing nights at the 051 years ago in like 95, 6, the state, 93, 94, um, you have such a huge selection of, of music that you've been brought up with as well in the Quads and Park when I was out raving myself and all such big influential music that, that changed your life to a, to a point. Um, it's very rare you get a chance to play them all. So that's what you're doing, and I've seen you, you've been compiling this list of tunes over the past couple of weeks, you've put so much work into this. So you're basically playing every tune that has kind of defined your career over the past 25 years or so. Yeah, and it's the most difficult task I've ever come across yeah. in my life. It's not choosing the music, it's, it's losing the music you can't play. That's difficult. What's the, what's the hardest tune you've lost so far? Oh, I couldn't even begin to tell you, honestly. I could pick... Uh, five hours sounds like a long time. As you can see, I'm strapped into strapped an electric chair. Strapped in, yeah. I'm strapped yeah. into an electric chair here. This is what Bedlam's all about. If you're coming on Saturday, believe me, you are Shopping in. Shopping trolleys and everything. And you are in for yeah. a serious <laughs> treat because it is utter butler Bedlam in here. I'm strapped into the electric chair. But um, picking the music has been more difficult than I could possibly have imagined. I, I could pick... Uh, uh, five hours is 80 songs. Uh, that's how many songs I think I'll get away in five hours. Um, and... I could pick 80 songs from every single club easily. When I go through my folders for music for each venue, which I have on my computer, I'll have an 051 section, I'll have a state section, a Quadrant Park section, I'll have a classic section, a 90s, a vocal house section. There's hundreds in each. Mm. I'm whittling that down to 15 or 16 an hour. It's horrendous. Can't imagine it. Can't it's imagine breaking it. me heart to lose <laughs> some of the tracks, <laughs> honestly. It's crying really before. <laughs> uh, listen, before we go any further, we have got two places left on the guest list yep. for Saturday for History Lesson here at Bedlam on Gar in Garland with Lee. Um, and we're giving them away right now. 24 hours. We're going to do a big retweet comp. All you've got to do is retweet this video uh, or share it on Facebook and we'll be choosing you as a winner. Uh, Saturday afternoon, 4pm, you could be here at Bedlam. But that is the competition. I want to talk about you and your career. So when did you first, what was your first gig? When was it? How old were you? Tell us, tell us more. I'm going to remove myself from this electric chair. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Can't move. Um, the influence probably was, was the Quads and Park. I was an electrician when I left school in 87. Um, I went to Uber College, done my uh, City and Gills Electrical Installation 236 course. Did you pass? I didn't. Um, <laughs> so if I rewired your house in the, in the late 80s... <laughs> That's why he's in an electric chair. I do apologise. <laughs> no, and I was, I, I was rewiring stuff and house bashing and climbing under floorboards and... Uh, 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 all the tops of nursing homes in Heighton and all sorts of stuff for a couple of years. But around 88, 89, I started um, going out and venturing into these this new sort of house sound that swept us all away. Um, the difference, I think, then was none of us had heard the sound before. And that makes a huge difference. People ask me why the Quadrant Park was so special. It was because no one had heard that house sound at all ever a lot of the kids after that generation were brought up with their brothers or sisters or their mums and dads yeah. so they'd heard that sound whether in the house or we'd never heard it before see that's really interesting for me because obviously I'm just only a, only a little bit younger than you um, <laughs> I know you. it doesn't show to be honest but um, <laughs> But for me, it was always there. It was always about that. Was that was my my time going out, and even before listening to my brother or whatever playing them tunes, I thought it always existed. Yeah, and and you know, eighty seven, eight, nine, ninety, when you know it, it it swept us all away, and I was going to Quads and Park in them days and seeing John Kelly and Mike Nola and and the lads DJ into like two, three thousand people, and and we'd never heard that sound before. And although there was an, another generation of people who experienced something similar at the 051, at the state whilst I was there, there was, that was their first club. The sound had been there for a while. Mm. And so I think because the sound was fresh and new and all these big Italian pianos and screaming vocals and all these house beats, 
we were part of something that we just didn't know what was yeah, going on at amazing. the time. Will we ever get that again? Will we ever get uh, in, in, in any music, especially dance music, electronic music, will we ever get that, that moment again? And we're like, wow, what's this? Um, it does, it, that atmosphere still gets generated. There's still a younger generation that go out and, and have these amazing nights mm -hmm. for them. It's just that I think it's, it's a one-off situation when that house music is first heard for us lot. It was yeah. just, I don't think you can replace that. Mm. You know, generations have been brought up listening to it now. It's 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 always been around, but yeah. then it was just something that we, something we were special. swept away by. Tell me about your first gig. Where was it? And, and how nervous were you? My first gig was in um, was in Finch Lane, in in Heighton, in Duffcott, in the Heighton Labour Club, right. and I was covering for my uncle Dave. <laughs> And um, I must have played Jimmy Mack, yeah. third finger left hand, uh, a load of 60s stuff um, on the oldest set of decks you've ever seen in your life. And then I got a residency in the Phoenix pub in Cancel Farm, or should I say Stockbridge Village? Yeah, Stockbridge Village. Stockbridge yeah, Village. Yeah, uh, apologies to the Canny Farm crew. <laughs> yeah. um, and I did that for about 12 months. But when I was there, I used to do it to get the money to buy me vinyl. Was that party tunes or was that, was that dance? Mostly party, but I was sneaking some of me, me, me house in there. But I was that was basically getting me money to buy me vinyl. See, I can't imagine you playing the birdie song and, and oh, the yeah. locomotion and all if that. It, if it got me some money for me vinyl, mate, I would do anything. Yeah. <laughs> now, tell us, you, obviously, your gigs, your first gig was there. The, the biggest club first off that you played, what was that? Was that Quadrant Park? Was it? No, I never played the quad. The quad was what influenced me to want right. to become so a DJ. You never played there? No, never I played never the quad. That. The quad was, was James and and John and Mike and Andy Carroll and that was think was what gave me the influence then to go you know what this is this is where I want to be and then you know 93 I, I, I went to state and um, and started my residency in the state uh, and was so amazing nights there the state was incredible and, and you know on, on a par with the quad for that state generation yeah. was just like immense from the monster jam nights to all the big events we did there um, and then I was there for Three years and I left the state in '95. Mm. I got poached by the buzz in Skellorn Street. So you actually got, got poached? So yeah, I was on. The cause of it as I well. mean, I don't want to blow myself up to the tax man, but I wasn't on a lot of money. Yeah. If he doubled my money, I'd probably be on 150. Um, so I got a, I, I got a double your money offer from the buzz and right. I left the state, which was tough, uh, and went to buzz. But I was only at the buzz for 11 months, right. and the buzz wasn't wasn't one of them places. It was good, but it was carpets. It was it was a little bit Sharon and Tracy ish. It was great nights there, but it didn't have that real underground feel like yeah. the state had yeah. and the quad had and the 051. And that this place has. Yeah, completely, well. completely. And you know, so after that, I got poached again by uh, by John and John from the 051, and and I teamed up with Dave Graham, and we done our first night in October 1996 called Battle of the Heavyweights, mm. um, which was one of the most amazing nights I've ever done. I mean, Dave had a huge following, so did I, and the two of us joined the forces. We created a Saturday night there that locked out for like three, four years in a row, yeah. every Saturday, and it was like an amazing, an amazing time. It was sexy medicine. There was people with banners mm. with me name on, people with Dave Graham t-shirts. Brilliant. It was Brilliant. fantastic. I just can't imagine to you know to be to be in a venue like that and you're in the DJ box and, and to be seeing that that must be the biggest buzz ever. It was brilliant, and you know we 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 were live on Radio City then as well. We mm. started something new, which was, was was Pez was on at the time yeah. doing the club zone, and we went live at midnight on Radio City till two for years and years. You could listen to the broadcast live on the radio. It started a good trend at the time. Well, that that was when I started getting into to your tunes and, and to dance music was was through Radio City, and that must have opened it up to even more. Um, you did then start on Radio City. I did. I was working there at the time, and um, I used to produce Lee actually on Radio City. And <laughs> Lee's fair shows, he, he didn't really grasp the concept that you'd, you'd bring your microphone up and, and do your link, as we call it. Then you'd have to bring your microphone down. Lee would leave it open, and, and sometimes some expletives got out. There was, the there was, there was, there was, there was a bollocks on live on air <laughs> yeah. once. I can't say that. I think it just got missed by the bosses. It did. But there was an RGA used to save the day lots of times. There was something I used to do called what the butler saw. Mm. Um, it was two o'clock in the morning when I first started on Radio City, and that was what we used to do together. Yeah, yeah. And it was only a fifteen-minute feature, but it used to take me about three hours to pre-record. <laughs> the links were terrible. I'd, uh, you know, I'd write them down. Uh, it, it'd take me ages it was forever getting, we were forever redoing the yeah, links yeah. weren't we but um, then that obviously led now to well first off plastic surgery it did um, and plastic fantastic was Plast the first name for it yeah it was plastic fantastic which we got stopped for using because it was a record shop in Ibiza so we mm. changed it to plastic surgery and um, 
that was just a Friday night at the time. Then I got an offer from Juice um, to go over there, who offered me a couple of nights on Juice a long time ago. Um, the bosses said they didn't want me to go, so they gave me a Saturday night. So I then ended up with a Friday and Saturday night, and they were great nights on Radio City. They were, I used to love doing my weekend shows there. Um, Can you remember any of them? Uh, yeah, they were, they were very, <laughs> very few of them. Joking. Very few of them, but they were, and we used to get a fantastic response to them. The response um, was huge, absolutely massive. I've never seen a radio show with such a response, actually. Then you, you moved now from, from the night times on Radio City. You're now a daytime radio presenter, which is so different to what you were doing. And, and you're on seven days a week now. Yeah, it's completely different. And, you know, people have always mention to me, how come you don't do the dance weekends anymore? You know, but I think to stay in the radio, Jay, you've got to evolve. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love being on the radio. You know, I'm full of personality. I've got a great relationship with the people of Liverpool. Um, I'm local. I can connect with them. I'm, I just talk about real stuff. Mm. And... Um, I love being on the radio, I love doing fun stuff, I love doing real stuff, talking about the kids, talking about nights out, old places, new stuff, and you know. And you still got the odd tune in too with your Brecky Butler of the morning with Dave and Leanne, and two o'clock is, is anthems, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, my Sunday show's doing really, really well. I've been on there 18 months now, and it's, it's going great. We've got a Brecky Butler mix of two. Uh, I've just started Saturdays, two till six in the afternoon, and then Brecky Butler with Leanne and Dave, which is just massive around Liverpool. My Twitter just goes bonkers. Because obviously now it's, it's the only radio station that does that so uh, it is yeah if, if you want your liverpool anthems your real real classic gems then 9 30 with leanne and dave in the morning and now my new slot of, a, of an afternoon two o'clock anthems which is like three decades of tunes yeah. everything from en vogue to fbi project risky mm. to you know it's right across the board so i'm really really enjoying being on the radio great show. it's a great listen uh finally lee this is a tough question i'm going to ask you to choose one tune oh one no song. one song no no you can't do that to if me you could be left with one tune and that's it, that's all you can listen to again. What would it be? I can't believe you just asked me that. Well, that is just, it's such a difficult thing. Um, there's lots of, lots of tunes that I have, um, people link me to, mm. you know, um, uh, lots of DJs have sort of them anthems that if you close your eyes and you hear the tune, then you know they're on. And I think maybe Hyper Go Go, Never Let Go would be something a lot of people would, if they shut their eyes, would think of me. So I think maybe when I go, uh, and I'm getting getting blessed off. Maybe we'll, we'll have it on your grave. Hyper Gogo can be on at my yeah, funeral yeah, if you've you heard it here first. We've all got a rave out of it. Yeah, to never let go. There'll be yeah. a few tears in their eyes. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, well, Lee, listen, enjoy Saturday. It's going to be a big night. And thanks for giving us a little history lesson. You're going to be back uh, on the Guide Liverpool with your nightlife spot next week, which is going down brilliantly, by the way. It is. And the video cameras are here. Our Dave the Rave, Dave the Rave. Mr. Scrumptious, is here on Saturday. He's going to be filming you a lot. So if you're coming, you're in for a real, real tweet. 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 We'll you're tweet even, it as well. You're even in for a tweet, honestly. Doors open at 10. The journey with me starts at 11 till 4 in the morning. Get here early because there's some unbelievable anthems getting played in the first hour. Five hours of massive tunes with this boat, Mr. Lee Butler. And if you want to be here, retweet this tweet or Facebook share it. And you could be here on the guest list for Lee's History Lesson. Lee, nice one, mate. Enjoy Thank Saturday. You, sir.